Scaling up, scaling out, adding read replicas, different read models, caching, multi-tenant. You have a lot of options. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. So you have a monolith that you need to scale. Now you're thinking of moving to microservices specifically for those scaling concerns. But hang on, here's some things that you can do to scale your existing monolith. You'd be surprised how far you can actually take this. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So when we're talking about scaling, really what we wanna do is just do more work. We have more requests, more things that we actually need to process. Now I'm gonna start pretty simply. When you really think about this, we have our monolith that really just, we need to scale this up. So one way we can do that is just increasing the instance of whatever host we're running on for our app, for our compute, to provide it more CPU, more memory, more network, more storage, whatever the case may be. So we can just scale up. We can just increase that single instance size of where we're running. Ultimately, when you do this, you're gonna start realizing we're gonna develop a bottleneck. And that's really kind of the theme of most of this, is you will start having a bottleneck that you gotta keep increasing so you have the entire flow scaled appropriately. If you add more compute, you're gonna have a bottleneck now at your database, which you're likely gonna then need to do the same thing. You're gonna have to scale up your database. So really the simplest, easiest form of doing this, which can be actually cost effective, is don't go down any other route first than just scaling up. Now, like most things, context matters. The style of your application that you're developing matters. Maybe it's CPU intensive and you're gonna scale your app compute differently than if you have a data intensive app that you're gonna scale your database. Like I'm mentioning here, just be aware of the bottlenecks you may be creating. So the second most obvious thing we're gonna do here now is scale out, especially if we have availability concerns or we just have a lot of requests that a single instance can't handle. So that means that now we've added a load balancer that let's say is just doing a round robin for this example and we get our first request, it hits the first instance behind our load balancer, second request comes in, hit the second one and then just this keeps going on. Now, as you can assume, the reason why we're doing this, one is availability, but two is because we need a lot of CPU, a lot of memory to serve these requests because it's not really just one user, it's many users creating many different requests. Now, another aspect that isn't quite talked about enough, especially now with cloud computing and containers and how the way that you can deploy things is that you may choose to define different resources for different segments of your app. Yes, it's still the same monolith, but now you can choose behind that load balancer that certain requests are routed a particular way. And behind those, say in this case, my top two, let's say they're in the same grouping, maybe those, are, those instances have different resources than the third. So that means that if we have a lot of requests for a particular routes or a segment of routes, we can direct the traffic to those. But if we have a different request that maybe is not, um, not as often, not as frequent, um, those can be handled separately by a different grouping. So you can kind of scale specifically by the type of traffic that you have, by the types of requests that are being made to a segment of your instances that are deployed. Now, when we need to do more work, we need to scale. That doesn't mean it all has to happen at the exact same time. I'm gonna show an example here, but there's a lot of places that you could find that you can do work asynchronously, separately, and that's where messaging, queuing, and event-driven architecture really comes into play. So as the example, when we have a request that comes in to perform some type of action, we hit our database, we can decide at that point, oh, there's actually something that we should add to a queue that we can do asynchronously. And then our request is finished. Separately, within the same monolith, still the same, it could be a separate process, a separate instance, that we could be listening to that queue, meaning that we have our publisher and consumer is really the same thing. We can do that work asynchronously. I'm gonna be creating a video on this, on how you can find places within your app and examples of things you can find that you can do asynchronous, but the easiest, the simplest, always in this case, is here's an example of an e-commerce application where you're going through a checkout process, this is eShop on web. I've kind of modified this, but we're looking at when you actually place your order. What's happening here is we're setting the quantity on the basket. We're using this order service to actually create the order. We're removing our basket because it's we've created an order from that. And here's the last one. We're sending out an email. This sending out of the email 100% can be something that we're doing asynchronously. 
We, it does not need to be done in process in line with actually creating our order. It's actually not really useful to do so because we have some issues with failures. What happens if this line actually fails? If we're not catching it properly or not handling it, we're gonna potentially be sending back to the user that there was an error when really their order was created. It just wasn't able to send the email. So anytime you see code like this where you're doing multiple things, even if it's broken down into different methods, there's a lot of things you can and should be doing asynchronously. So let's talk about that bottleneck again. If we're doing more work because we're scaling horizontally, we can process more requests, or we've added a queue that we can do more work asynchronously, our bottleneck is gonna be the database, especially if it's all those different pieces of work are hitting the database. So yes, one option is scaling up, but what are our other options? The first option is replication, adding read replicas. Most applications, not all, but most, are more read intensive than they are write intensive. That means that we can offload a lot of the queries that we're performing to read replicas. That means that our primary database is responsible for writes primarily, and we can use read replicas to offload a lot of requests. Now, it's not like you just go add read replicas and everything's just gonna work. That's not really the way this works. You have to be aware of where you're trying to read your own writes because you can have some UX issues there. I've done a video on that. I'll have a link in the description. But the idea here is if you're read intensive, add read replicas to offload a lot of that work. Now I've done videos about CQRS and I've explained how it isn't about having two different data sources, but if you are using event sourcing, then you naturally just get this ability if you're creating projections for read models. This means that you're applying CQRS and event sourcing, and when you're doing queries, you're hitting a read model based off projections that you've created, and if you're doing writes, you're hitting your event store. And because of that, you can scale these differently. Now, because we have a bottleneck at our database, we're doing things like read replicas or read models to alleviate that, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention caching. But caching isn't that easy. It's not necessarily the invalidation uh, that's hard. I've done a video on this. I don't really actually think that's much of an issue. It's more of the cascading failures you can have when you're caching. So things like if you're doing cache aside where you're reading from your cache, if the item isn't there, you hit your database, then you try to cache it. The issue here is that if you have cache availability concerns and you can't reach your cache, now all that traffic is gonna go to your database. And if it's not scaled appropriately, you may overwhelm your database. So yes, caching is another option to kind of alleviate and remove some of the requests, some of the load that you be at your database, you can use a cache. Now, as I mentioned earlier, context matters, the types of system that you're building matters. And if you're building something that's multi-tenant, then you have everything that I just described plus more, because that means that you can separate databases by tenants. So if we have one tenant, we can share that same app compute, but depending on the request, who it's coming from, we can then hit the, the database for that tenant. The same thing for other tenants, they have their own database. That way we're kind of, instead of having that bottleneck at our database, now we have multiple databases. Yes, we're still a monolith. They have the exact same schema. We're just now separating that database by tenant, by database. Lastly, it's about your code in optimizing the hot pass. Likely 80% of all the load is being produced by 20% of the requests or the routes. Optimize those hot pass. Look at the requests you're doing. Are you making too many database requests? Can you optimize that? Or can you optimize the requests that you're actually making to the database? Are you doing too many things that are CPU intensive? Just optimize that 20%. You can go a long way just doing that without having to think about, oh, we need to add read replicas, or we need to do this, or we need to scale this. Just look first, it may be cost effective, that's a big portion of this, to spend some time looking at optimizing those hot paths. So before you jump to developing independently deployable services and trying to decompose your monolith, yes, you have options. There's many different options. Yes, different deployable services have other benefits beyond just scaling, but you don't need to jump to that immediately. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna chat with other software developers about software architecture design and topics like this, make sure to join my channel. You can get access to a private Discord server. Check the links in the description on how to join. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.